only a very small part of the fish collection. The collection contains about 1.6 million specimens. What you're looking at here, though, the first half dozen bays here are the type collection, and the types are the specimens upon which a new species was actually described. Jar. Thank you, Jar. 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 That one? Okay. What we've got here, it's a type of triglid. Yeah. Not a particularly handsome fish, although people that work on triglids would yeah. probably be quite exciting. And this fish, you can see the date there, yeah. 1910. The fish was actually used by Ogilby. Now, Ogilby was a past curator here at the Australian Museum, and he used this actual fish in 1910 to write a scientific paper that described this new species. So these are some of the older ones you see here. Um, this thing here, Cinerensis, was collected was described by Day, Francis Day, in 1872. Uh, the type collection here at the Australian Museum is the fourth largest in the world. Uh, it's a really massive and uh, obviously the most important part of the entire collection. There are the main types, the red ones, these are called primary types, yeah. and a hollow type is one specimen, that's the name bearing specimen. Um, and there are usually, if you like, backups called paratypes. Yeah. Considering this is actually, it's like a library, yeah. um, that instead of containing books that get lent out and then come back dog-eared and coffee stained, the specimens come back worth a lot more because in fact people will publish papers on them. We've got one of the largest lava fish collections in the world. Uh, one of our guys here, Jeff Lees, has done a lot of work over many years on lava fishes. You can see that there are vials with small fish. Our guys have spent years trying to work out, trying to put together to analyse the difference the differences as a fish grows from an, from an egg through to the adult and there are all these stages. I mean with fish larvae the interesting thing is they look totally unlike mm. the adults. These are these are in fact leptocephaly. Um, they're eel larvae. So you can see here there's many many of these things. They look like ribbons. Ribbons with little eyes, little dots at one end. What, what we've got here on the Right, these are all cleared and stained fishes. Basically clearing and staining is a process by which the flesh of the fish is cleared, obviously that's the clearing and the staining bit. Yeah. The bones in fact here have been stained with alizarin red. So you can actually see the arrangement of the bones, how it all fits together. Uh, this thing, in fact, Gigantactus paxtoni, named after John Paxton, who's a current uh, research fellow here at the museum, worked here for many, many years. And this is the paratype, one of the name-bearing specimens. This fish is called Paxton's whip-nosed angler. And when you see it, you'll understand why. Very soft, flabby body. But this thing here is a lure, huge long lure. And these fish, with their impressive set of teeth, not only in the jaws, but on the roof of the mouth as well, they're active predators. And I've actually seen photographs of these things underwater. You'd think that they'd swim along like a, like a normal fish. In fact, they swim upside down, like this, with this big lure extended, whoops, extended out in front of them, over the bottom. Yeah, so, quite an impressive beast. The Spirit House was built in the early 60s, so yeah, it looks as though it's been around a little while, and it's pretty, pretty darn full. Cool. Juvenile white shark. Oh, but she, she weighs an absolute ton. The thing you should notice too about that is her teeth. Some of them are actually broken. You can see the teeth are quite like this sort of shape. Whereas when you think about it, a, a classic white shark, the teeth are more broad, yeah. and that that's pertaining to the diet. This one's only young. It's a juvenile. They don't mature until they're nearly four meters long. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, this one's just a baby. So its teeth are this sort of shape, and it's eating squids and fish, yeah. fishes. As they get older, of course, the teeth become uh, more obtuse, highly serrated. They're eating, as we know, a mammalian diet, you know, seals and other things. What we've got here, apart from just a, a range of sharks and boar fish, is this thing here, which has an impressive mouth. See the little lures in front here? Um, tiny little teeth, but very, very sharp, tiny pointed teeth. And these teeth were like road spikes. Here's the gill opening behind the petrol fin there. Amazing. Found, again, found in deep water. This one was trawled off southern New South Wales.